start with the one arm test? Mm -hmm. This is where Tom would normally no, share some no, jokes, right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to give you one more minute and we'll get started. So many of you may have received a text, right? If you had your phone. So this morning we found out that the internal TV station was not working. And then it was a story of activity because we were planning on filming it, taping it, and then replaying it on the internal on, on the internal TV station. Well, I don't know if you if anybody realizes, but that station has been down for at least two weeks. No complaints. Just a couple. No we, complaints. We got a couple complaints. Oh, okay. We thought it was more their TV, not the station. Well, come to find out, Spectrum deleted. The Spectrum engineers deleted our internal TV stations. Yeah, I guess they didn't really realize what was going on with them, and they were cleaning stuff up, and they said, what are these? Oh, we don't know what these are for, and they deleted them. So it was a story of activity this morning. As a matter of fact, the text was really about, hey, if you want to if, if you want to see this presentation, Joy is going to load it on the app, on the app after we after, after we're done and then it'll be replayed there meanwhile i just saw uh, quentin and lewis and, and lewis said hey they're trying to get the tv stations up and running so they made the tv station may be up and running by the time we're done this presentation <laughs> yes and if it is i will put the recording on at two o'clock and at four o'clock on channel 1391 if it's up and running but um, you can always go to your app and under the icon that says Tide Point Videos, you'll see a uh, little folder to open up that will say Budget Forum 2023, and you'll find this video. If you're interested, we got some seats up front. Up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. Morning. Welcome on this chilly morning. Uh, my name is Michael Friedel, your executive director. Welcome to the Budget Forum. And I'm gonna be joined today in presenting with, by Michelle Lehman. She's gonna help present some of the accounting slides as we share with you the, uh, the annual increase and some of the drivers behind that annual increase. But before we get into that, I'd like to just share a little bit about the agenda and then share what I call just some highlights about this community. I call it mission moments or members sharing their gifts. I just wanted to share a little bit about what I'm seeing and feeling in my first two months here. I think it's really, really good stuff. So let's take a look at the agenda. Um, <coughs> first, we're going to start with sharing our gifts, and then we're going to go into some community updates, some brief updates. Then we're going to go in and talk about the budget cycle and what that looks like here at Tide Point, which will lead us into the 2024 business plan, which is really our budget. And then I'm going to provide some brief community updates, and then we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers after that. So I've been here nine weeks. It's hard to believe it's gone by really fast. <coughs> And it's really just been, uh, for me, really exciting. There's been a lot going on. I met a lot of members. I don't remember everybody's name. Uh, my apologies if I bump into you and don't remember your name. Uh, I'm working on that. Uh, but what's really impressed me over the last nine weeks is you, the members, and the way, uh, the love that you have for this community, uh, the way that you support each other, um, the committees and their engagement in terms of really trying to make this the best community on Hilton Head Island. Um, the board and Mr. working alongside of Mr. Perryman, they have been really, really good experiences. But also, the, um, I wanted to, to share with you some of the things that really resonated with me that you're doing, not only here, but for the broader community. So, the Deep Well Project. Uh, right outside the administration office, there's two boxes, large boxes, that members are actually wrapping up Christmas presents for those that are less needy, for those that are needy and less fortunate. So that's really exciting to see, uh, tying into the broader community. 
And then just a, a few weeks ago, we had a couple events here. Uh, Veterans Day ceremony that was attended by not only members here, but also folks from the outside. It was a great luncheon. And then also we had the Marine Corps birthday. Uh, that Friday night before we celebrated Veterans Day. So um, I'm really impressed by the um, patriotism here, but also uh, the way that you tie into the broader community to support Veterans Day. I wanted to share something else that's been really special in my heart because I know the impact that this has on the staff. So I've been tying in with Mr. and Mrs. Neil regularly uh, about the Staff Appreciation Fund and wanted to take an opportunity to provide an update in terms of how that's trending for you all. Some really positive trends. Um, I'm gonna maybe get out of the way here so you can see that slide. <coughs> but as of this morning, uh, the community has donated, the members have donated $126,250, uh, which is about $30,000 away from the 2023 goal of 155,000. But there's time left. There's time left to meet that goal. So um, donations are going to be accepted through December 7th, 2023. So we still got a little over a week for any, any members that would like to donate. <clears throat> you can see the donation percentages or those that have participated overall is 75% of the community, but you can sort of see the breakdown by different buildings and um, where the opportunities might lie. So, um, many of you may have connected with employees over the years uh, and may, may have received thank yous from them. Just in terms of the impact that this has on them and their families during the holiday season. I know we did a similar uh, campaign in my last community um, and the employees, um, for those that live paycheck to paycheck, this is really, really helpful. And a lot of our frontline employees live paycheck to paycheck. So um, I wanted to say, from me, the executive director, this is really impressive that you're doing this for our staff, and I know that they really appreciate it. Oh, by the way, Mr. Neal's here in the back, and I just wanted to give him a shout out because uh, Mr. and Mrs. Neal, and I think there's someone else on the team, are actually updating the chart. Joneses, they're the here. Joneses. The Joneses? Yeah. Mr. Jones, I can't talk about Okay, so. yeah, so you're updating those, those charts on a daily basis and really just connecting with the members across the community to drive participation. So um, thank you for that. <coughs> Whoops, pressing the wrong button. All right, so I wanted to briefly share just some pictures that I took over the last eight weeks about what's been taking place here uh, during the refurbishment. So, uh, just before Thanksgiving, we opened up the Magnolia Room, but the week prior or two weeks prior, that's what the Magnolia Room looked like, right? And then all of a sudden, it came together and we are able to get it opened up for Thanksgiving. <coughs> Rotunda, right? The columns, they're not as small as we would have liked. Um, but they did scale them back a little bit. So you can see on the left-hand side, your left-hand side, the plastic, but on the right-hand side, the snapshot inside the plastic, what that looked like as it was doing the work. Two views of the entry. Uh, the one on the left is looking from, um, as you walk in the building, towards the rotunda, and then the one on the right is looking from the center of the rotunda out towards the middle. A whole new fresh look, very nice. Large room. That was probably one of the first rooms that came together. And there's the rotunda uh, yesterday, or today, yesterday. And I wanted to make sure that I got a snapshot of that flip chart. <laughs> the chart. Thank you very much. <laughs> because there's a lot of work there. There's a lot of work there. So, I did this for two reasons. One, so you can sort of get a view and a snapshot of how this has progressed. And you've seen it long before me. You've seen the whole project uh, come together. But I got some exciting news that I wanted to share with you. Next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're gonna be getting a furniture delivery. Uh, so they're gonna be dropping off tables for the Calabogie room. 
They're going to be putting, they're going to remove all the tables from there on Monday. And then they're going to be putting the new tables in there on Tuesday to include the banquettes. And then on Wednesday, they, they bring the chairs into the Calabogie room. On Wednesday, we'll be taking all of the existing chairs out of Magnolia and replacing them with the new chairs uh, for the Magnolia room, for the dining room. In addition to that, different areas of the rotunda from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are going to receive new case goods, so the furniture, uh, side tables, and uh, stuff like that. And they're going to receive new upholstered items, chairs, and sofas, uh, accessories, and then also the artwork. So next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are going to be big days here at the community. We'll have um, some of our corporate partners here to assist with that. We're going to have, I think, everything. It's going to be three tractor trailer loads of uh, goods that are going to be delivered. Um, so it's going to be pretty exciting around here next week. Now on Monday, before this all happens, we're going to have an auction of existing furniture and case <coughs> goods. And you're going to get a memo in your mailbox today talking about that. So if you're interested in anything that might be hanging around this area and that's doing some spots in your home, um, <laughs> if you like, maybe, maybe not. Uh, we're going to have an auction. You may just want to come and enjoy the activity and see how it flows. Uh, there's not going to be an auctioneer. It's going to be more of a solid auction. Unless you have any auctioneers in here, I'd be more than happy to do that. That'd be pretty exciting. It's going to be more of a solid auction. So on the items that are going to be auctioned off, there'll be a piece of paper and there'll be an opening bid, and then you can combine, if you're interested, put your bid, uh, place your bid. Uh, there'll be a small window that we're going to do that. And the reason that we're going to have a small window is because when I get the auction done and pull that information off, but we're going to need to leave the furniture in here for a day or two uh, because the new furniture is not coming through Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So if you do have the winning bid, uh, we'll get it delivered to your home um, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Okay. So this this move into the uh, the meat of the presentation. So I wanted to, these are just a couple slides that I wanted to put up there to preface or just share some of the background in terms of what we look at, look at from a management team standpoint. And this is also good for the board and committees to look at as well as the members to look at as we go into the, as we think about the budget cycle, we think about the annual increase and we think about the impact that this all has on not only the viability of the community today, but also the viability of the community long term. So this community has been open for, for many years, I think 26 years at this point. Uh, and if you take a look at the history, there's only been one special assessment that's taken place. And that was right after Hurricane Matthews. Uh, and that was just to help offset the $286,000 uh, deductible that was required um, to get, you know, to pay off uh, to to satisfy the insurance uh, requirement. So, um, but as we go through this process, we take a look at not only today, but also long-term. So it's important that we look at community operating expenses, not only for today, but also the impact long-term. And as I go through this presentation, you'll see why I put this up there, because there is some more forward, forward thinking ideas that we have to have as we move forward. And then we take a look at our capital expenditures. So uh, the refurbishment is big, it's huge, uh, over $3 million. Um, but that's not the only thing, that's not the only capital expense that takes place here at the community. So we need to keep in mind our capital expenditures, not only for today, but also as we look into the future. And then we you know, want to ensure that there's a reserve in place, that there's funds in place in the event that something significant happens and, we need, and the board needs to, to draw into that. So um, these are all important considerations as we go into the budgeting process. I wanted to share a little bit about the budgeting process. Many of you have worked in businesses over the years and are probably well aware of that and probably don't even want to think about it because you did it so long. But this is really high level in terms of how we approach it here. Uh, we're going to start on the right hand side of this with monthly monitoring. Once the budget is approved, we, not only from a department standpoint, but also the finance committee standpoint and the board standpoint, monitor on a monthly basis. 
So Michelle and her team pull together reports that are shared with the Finance Committee. Uh, it's reviewed and um, you know, we take a look at revenue and expenses and then that, how that all plays out for that month. And then at least on a quarterly basis, we're doing a little bit deep, deeper dive. What are the trends? What are we seeing? How is it flowing? Do we need to make any adjustments? That's more from the management standpoint, from the operational standpoint. Uh, are we, are we managing our wages, our controllable items? How is the food cost related to budget? Those kind of things. Have we had any one-off expenses that impact uh, the budget? So we do quarterly reviews. We do them at least a couple times up into the mid-year. And then we, once we get past June and into July, we start thinking about, believe it or not, 2025. In this case, 2024. But we start thinking about it that early. And we have to start thinking about it that early because <clears throat> for a couple different reasons. One, um, are there any one-time expenses that have come through that have impacted our budget that we have to forecast out the rest of the year um, to see how that's going to potentially impact the next calendar year? Uh, or are there any savings? Are the savings more than we thought? So that can have a positive impact on the, the next um, increase. And then once we go through the budget preparation, which by the way, I stepped right into when I got when I came here. Uh, it was Michelle's first one, and I was here about three days, and Tom said, well, the budget packet's here. I'm going on vacation next week. <laughs> so, but it was good for me. Uh, it was good for me to step into that because ultimately, I'm you know, the executive director coming in, and I need to sort of get in and get in quick to better understand what was going on. So we navigated that that together and we got really immersed in it and I think that was very helpful for us. Once we get through and get the, uh, the budget together, we submit it to the Finance Committee for review, uh, which then may provide feedback. Uh, it doesn't all happen at that meeting. Hopefully throughout the year we're getting feedback from the Finance Committee, but the Finance Committee has an opportunity for input and then we also uh, bring it to the board. Uh, and then they take a look at it as well. So then once we, we get it uh, reviewed, then it becomes the final budget. And then once we get the final budget, we share it with our team and then we move forward. So that's that's the cycle. You can see in the middle, all you know that it's, it just happens every year. In the middle of all that is our annual operating budget and then our 10-year ten, ten capital plan. So it's a process that takes place. Okay, so this experience for me this year with the budget is a little bit different than I've been used to in the past. Um, and, I'll, and I'll just share real briefly, in the past, in my previous experiences, in my previous communities, I haven't, we haven't necessarily shared the annual increase ahead of this meeting. In the case here at Tide Point, we share with the Finance Committee, share it with the board, and we also share it with you. So what you're about to see, most of you, if you read the, had a chance to take a look at the document, already know that we have a We've uh, communicated the annual increase. <clears throat> so the monthly service fee increase for 2024 uh, landed at 6.5%. We'll talk a little bit about that in detail, how we arrived at that. But the process is very, as I have up here on the screen, is pretty much what I just shared with you in the budget process. Um, once we have a final budget, um, here at the local community, we share it with the Finance Committee. They recommend it to the Board of Directors, and the Board either has feedback for us or they accept it, and then we move forward from there. So, um, the 2020, there is, whoops, sorry, the 2024 <laughs> capital budget has yet to be formally accepted because there's some outstanding items that we're trying to get our arms around, particularly related to the expenses that are taking place with the refurbishment and the rotunda and the clubhouse here. So uh, we just wanted to make sure that we had a good handle on those expenses before we formally submit that to the Finance Committee and the Board uh, for review. The monthly service package is 6.5% and the rate goes into effect January 1st, 2024. I thought this is a good slide that I uh, wanted to share with you because it gives you an idea of the annual increase history 
And I had to consolidate this a little bit because in 26 years, this community has been open. And if I put the whole 26 year flow up there, it gets a little, a little small. So in this historical fee uh, slide, you can see I have 1996 to 2014. So if you took all those years combined, the average increase was 3.4%. And over those years, from 96 to 2014, the reserve increase has been 9.5%. Now, in that time frame, some years annual increase was zero. Might have been 1%, sometimes it was 4%. 2009, 2010, the real estate bust, you may remember that. Uh, they were a little bit higher during that time. Uh, same with the reserve. Early on, when the community was first built, you don't need as much reserve because the community is younger. Not as much to repair or fix, but over the years, that's going to be increased and take care of uh, your asset. And then we pick up in 2015, and you can see as we go through here the trends um, from 15 to 24. So you can see in 2024, it's the 6.5%. Um, and then you can see the reserve increase is 0.10%. And you can see the 29 year average of increases is 3.8%. Do I know what's going to happen next year? Absolutely not. What I'm hoping happens is, is that, I mean, with interest rates the way they are, 7%, that's definitely slowing things down in the economy. Uh, inflation is not as high as we've seen in the past. I'm thinking that we're gonna continue to see a decline in 25 and 26 until we get it back into the 3% range. But only time will tell on that. But I will share. Um, put some of this into perspective. My last community, which was in Houston, there was a 6.9% increase. Uh, last year, we were 7.9. Some of our local competitors in the market here uh, are higher than we, we are. We're 6.5, and I'm hearing that some might be right around the 8% mark. So, in a minute, we're going to share how we got to that 6.5. Um, because we we're going to have to have some changes next year in how we conduct business. And I think they're going to be positive changes. So with that, I'd like to invite my counterpart up, Michelle, and she's going to share about the operating budget. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Michelle Lehman. I've been here for actually four whole months now. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces out there, um, but for those of you I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, I hope I am able to do that soon. And I will try not to put you to sleep with a lot of numbers this morning. Uh, we're gonna keep it at a high level. Um, the next slide is a summary. It's a nice um, view of the 2024 budget all the way to the right and comparing to the original 2023 budget and the projection that we have to end this year. So the projection for 2023 includes actual numbers through the end of October. And then we've extrapolated and you know uh, made some assumptions of where we expect to be at the end of the year. So when you compare, I have to get my glasses so I can't read anymore in my old age I'm on the paper, but if you compare 2024 budget numbers to the 2023 of course for the revenue and this is very summarized but the overall revenue is up just under six and a half percent as you would expect because the membership fees are increasing by six and a half percent there is a small amount of ancillary um, services that we provide that are not increasing by the six and a half percent so it comes in just about 6.4 overall for the increase in our budgeted revenue for the expenses, and certainly there's a lot of focus on managing our expenses. In 2024, uh, the budget number versus 2023, um, 2024 is up by about 6%. But when you compare that to where we expect actually to be um, in 2023, the projection is up about 3% over. So you can see that 
due to inflation and other um, things that we, as we'll talk more in future slides, temps, temp uh, labor and things of that nature has impacted our budget for this year. We're trying to make some changes going forward so that we can improve upon some of those uh, material key areas. So overall, um, the net income comes in at 1.328513. And as you know, the net income at the, at the end of it will then flow to cover the capital expenditure projects such as the refresh and other things as well as um, replenish the reserve fund. So the capital expenditures at this time, as Michael suggested, is um, still being finalized. We'll talk a little bit about that in uh, slide 17, I believe, um, if we can move forward here. What you see here are the key expenses broken out so you can get a, an idea of, of the money spent what are the categories of expenditures? So as you can imagine, being a service type organization, salaries and benefits are an enormous part of our expenses here, 47%. That's the servers in the dining room, that's the cooks in the kitchen, that's the main service, that's you know all the people here to support you all on a daily basis, as well as the people like me that make sure the bills get paid and all of those various things. Number two, professional services, management fees, and contracted services comes in at 12%. And then food and beverage costs are right below at 10%. That's your food costs and your beverage costs. And certainly um, those have been impacted due to inflationary pressures recently. So this is certainly a focus area for us to try to manage. Repairs and maintenance, 9% insurance and transportation eight percent utilities at seven and then kind of a other category of admin and supplies and taxes and all of these other types of um, expenses at seven percent we'll talk a little bit more about the insurance and some of the drivers behind this um, we're going to advance to the, the next slide just to give you an idea <clears throat> the insurance costs uh, compared in this budget that's been presented to you versus the 2023 budget gone up 20% um, versus the anticipated plan back then and 16% over the projected end result for this year. So you can see it, it, um, it's a big jump going forward and these are final numbers. Uh, our corporate service provider negotiates these numbers, and so I think we've all seen in, the, in you know, Hilton Head at large great um, increases in uh, insurance um, recently. And then another area that we're really focusing on that's driving the increases in what we can <coughs> anticipate, you know, having some control over and trying to manage those is really the combination of wages, benefits, and contract labor. Our wages, when we compare to our plan from back in 2023 versus the plan for 2024, uh, wages and benefits have increased by about 3%. But when you look at where we project to end the year versus our plan for 2024, that's only increased 1%. And that's really because of the uh, temp labor that we've had to utilize uh, due to the employment market, labor market here, and just trying to find good people and, and keep them in, in their roles. So this is something that has been the focus um, since I've started here and will continue to be going forward. And just to give you an idea, the budget for 2023 allowed for 126,000 in service costs. We actually are projecting to end the year at 215,000 that we will pay for temp services. In the 2024 budget, there's $48,000 available to make the transition to try to terminate some of these um, roles and keep them in house. So, pretty aggressive, trying really hard to manage that cost. Um, I know it's been a concern. So, to go from 215,000 
reality in 2023 to anticipating 48,000 next year, I think is, uh, is a great uh, start, uh, a good way forward. Michelle? I have a question. Do we have any uh, influence at all on the insurance premium rate uh, going up and down? Uh, or is that all that is Chicago? For all uh, the VI uh, community? So, among all the communities, yeah, are they do seeing have, the. Do we have an influence here in, in that point? I, don't know. I think it is hitting some communities more so than others, certainly because of the hurricanes here in the Florida location. There's some other communities that their increases have been a little bit more, but overall there's significant increases across the board. And I think you'll find that with every, you know, every homeowner, every entity that it's just the nature of what we're dealing with, with the economic conditions, <laughs> what they are um, currently. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Uh, the fact is, is there any community here that they have an influence of being in the negotiations with the insurance? Um, directly here to yeah. negotiate with the insurance company? Yes. Yeah. Um, Actually, V as a corporate entity has a lot more leverage. So they are the ones that are negotiating that out because they can go to the vendor and say, you know, we have this yeah. big piece of business and they're able to get a better rate due to that. Do you okay. want to add anything, yeah. Michael? So uh, Diane from our corporate office was down a couple months ago, maybe a month and a half ago, and that was a really great presentation. And But I was really surprised because, um, well, first, they can definitely get us a better price than we could here locally. Um, but when you take a look at what they're doing on a national level and uh, the bucket of insurers that they pull together to be able to draw down the price, I mean, it was probably about 10 different insurers on there that have a piece of this and a piece of that that supply uh, overall insurance for us. So um, I, think, I think the best uh, move for us is, is, is to keep it at the corporate level because they can combine all the communities together and which draws down the, the overall pricing for each community. But even with that, you've seen a significant increase. So it would definitely be more if we went local. So this final list of numbers here to present to you, and I'll turn it back over to Michael, is related to the CapEx budget. And as we um, stated earlier, it's not final yet. We're really scrutinizing anticipated projects to make sure that they need to occur in 2024. Um, we've already found a couple that could be pushed to 2025. The biggest um, factor in this is certainly the master plan refresh. You can see how it by category breaks out 1.2 million by apartment projects, construction projects, capital purchases, there's some equipment that we need, um, washing machine in the laundry room, some kitchen equipment to make sure the food is kept at a, a good temperature, things of that nature. So certainly every one of these will be scrutinized to make sure that the resources that are provided to go towards these things are used in the best way possible because as you saw from that $1.3 million number that was left and that income will go to fund the 1.2, hopefully less, and then any remaining amount will be kept in the reserve account. So it's really important, you know, the, there is a monthly contribution to the reserve to continue to carry that balance. I know that due to the refresh, some of that has been utilized but the goal is that over time, once the refresh is completed, then getting that balance back to the million dollars or more that you all are comfortable with. So that is my presentation for today. Thank you for your attention. And I'll turn it back over to Michael. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate that. So I shared earlier when I was presenting just some of the areas that we're going to be looking at to draw down the overall annual increase or do the best we can to keep it as low as possible. 
Um, so there's a couple of those pieces in this slide, but there's also something I wanted to share. Many of you may know that we have an agreement with Sea Pines, um, and uh, you know, hopefully the sales team when you were first moving in was sharing that with you, but members here do have access uh, to some of the amenities at the Sea, at sea Pines. So, if you're not familiar with that, you can stop by the sales office, they can give you some information. But we've had a long-standing agreement with, with Sea Pines and we continue, and we, we renegotiated that and we'll continue with that. So um, I'm not a historian by any means and some of you in the audience may have a better idea, but originally some of the original ownership group of this community was from the Sea Pines Resort. Um, so we're gonna continue that agreement. We think there's value to that, uh, not only for you as a member, but also the greater community. And it also provides some access to the Heritage uh, Golf Tournament um, as well. So that's pretty exciting. You'll see a lot, if you watch the, the, the golf tournament, whether either in person or on TV, you might see some Tide Point logos floating around because we do connect with, uh, with Sea Pines and, that, and the, uh, the golf tournament. So also we're getting a new 14 seat van. So we've been struggling with some vans this year, but I know Joy's really excited about that. I'm excited about that. That's coming in February. That'll allow us to provide uh, larger groups to go outside of the community on trips. So we can take two of the buses at once versus just one at a time. Uh, so excited about that. And then I was talking about some of the areas that we identified where there's opportunities in 2024 to um, do a better job in terms of labor costs or contract labor. One of those areas is the gatehouse. Now, from time to time, I've heard a lot of feedback uh, from members about the gatehouse experience. Some of that not particularly good. Matter of fact, when I first got here, um, I think uh, the, the, the day that I met the board and some of the committee members and some of the team here during my interview, I sort of just got waved through. Uh, I think there was a, a pass there and they gave me the pass and said hi and just sort of pointed me. There wasn't really a, a connection, you know, there from the gatehouse attendant. So when we were um, renegotiating contracts to renew that contract for the gatehouse and security, there was a 25% increase that they wanted. And that equated to about $100,000. Um, so we took a look at the gatehouse experience, we took a look at the money that was going to be involved with that and said I think we can do it better. So um, I charged our team to, to come up with a plan to one, we have to get, we have to get licensed uh, as a security provider and then we have to staff that but our goal is really the, uh, the first or second month of next year to have that staff and bring that in house. Uh, so you, we will have the employees at the gatehouse. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think we can do a much better job with that gatehouse experience. And then the dining staffing model. So a lot of restaurants on Hilton Head, labor is not readily available like you might see in a really large city. So we've always had some challenges staffing, particularly in the dish room, uh, in our kitchens. As a matter of fact, we've had temporary agent agency uh, contract labor, and, and we've been using that for years in our kitchen, just to maintain consistent staffing. Um, we've, we've taken a, a different approach for next year, and we're gonna start to really focus on recruiting uh, dishwashers. As a matter of fact, we got a meeting today with a local school um, that might be able to provide us one or two. Um, so I'm meeting with the uh, Director of Human Resources and the Director of that uh, facility and sort of talk through what some of the options are. We're reaching out to some of the other uh, local providers in the area um, to see if we can also um, partner with them to bring in some dishwashers. So we think we can do it in-house. It's only four dishwashers. It's not a lot, but it does save money. So as, as an example, let's just use this as an example. If we were paying $10 an hour for a dishwasher in-house, we're probably paying $15 an hour for a temp agency, so about 50% more. Now, labor is not that cheap. It's more like $20 an hour to $25 an hour for a dishwasher nowadays. Um, but we feel we can do it better in the house and there's gonna be some savings there. And then there's gonna be some additional resources out of our, our 
resident services and lifestyle, um, and I'm going to be calling it well-being support. That could be additional resources that to support members if there's a loss in a family, uh, namely the food support, uh, and some other areas that Carrie's focusing on. It's not a lot. It's going to be intermittent, but it'll, there will be some resources to help support that. And then also looking ahead, I uh, just wanted to share a vision. And we'll share more in the annual meeting. I'll share more in the annual, annual meeting with Mr. Perryman. Some focus areas uh, that we're going to be keeping an eye on as we head into 2024. The dining program in my short time here has really, in my opinion, done really well. There's lots of opportunities as we look ahead. So we're going to continue to focus on the dining program. We're going to continue with the phase two of the refurbishment. So in January, second to third week of January, they're going to be starting in the Sunset Lounge and then also the, the club room. Uh, they're going to be moving forward with that. And then also, I'd really like to continue our partnership with the Tide Point uh, board and committees. I think we feel that working together and supporting each other helps make life better here for the members. And I think we've done a good job in my short time here. I think Tom did a good job before me, and mm -hmm. I want to continue that. And then I also want to focus on maintaining high occupancy and independent living. So today we're 100%. We're uh, matter of fact, I think since I've been here over the last nine weeks, we might have had one open um, home, and it was only open, open for a short time. As a matter of fact, and you may already know this, if the home is opened up for sale here, it's still getting multiple offers. There's a, there's a lot of demand for Tide Point. There's not a lot of uh, inventory available. So that equates to you value in your home uh, over the years. You may have seen appreciation and uh, heard about the appreciation in your home values. But that's important for, for us as a management team to focus on that you're able to maintain that value, uh, but also ensure that this lifestyle is enjoyed by even more folks uh, in this market. So we want to protect your investment. We want uh, more seniors to be able to enjoy this lifestyle. It's a great one. And we're going to do our best to ensure that. So as I wrap up today, uh, I wanted to share, uh, if you don't have it on your calendar, just a reminder, December 12th at 4.30 is gonna be the annual meeting. Mr. Perryman has a great presentation for you. I'll have a piece in there, the executive director report, and I'll share some additional updates with you. Um, I would encourage you if you can attend that, that would be great. And then wanted to see if anybody has any questions. Yes, sir. I was wondering, do you have a timetable for drapes? I, I do not off the top of my head. Um, I know we've talked about drapes. I know they were working on the drapes, but I don't have a specific time. But next week, I have a, a corporate partners will be here, so I can ask that question. Okay. And we can get an update out to you. Yeah, one comment. Yeah. The pie chart shows the management fee was nine percent. I think that's an error, right? I think it was a pie chart. I think it was a combination of different different numbers wrapped up into that. It was management fees. We can go back to that slide. Excuse the management fees are eight percent of the revenue, but the breakout of that is the expenses so of, of the expenses it makes up nine percent of the expenses now in this um, scenario with the 12 percent, there's some other you know contract related special services stuff included but you're right in the original pie chart and i believe that nine percent was a little bit confusing so that's why i wanted to be sure everybody understood that it's nine percent of the expenses spent versus 8% of the revenue calculated. Does that wrap up? Oh, yes, sir. I was very surprised this morning to run into a bunch of workers who were not tight point people. I asked, what are you doing? And he said, we are replacing all windows. Yes, that is correct. So in, in Broad Creek, we've had a couple large scale projects at Broad Creek this year. One, they replaced the roof, and right now they're replacing all the windows at the care center. 
So that, that capital bucket comes from the to support that, but they're really doing some upgrades on the exterior of the building. So they're focused on, on the care center. Is the glass worn out or? Uh, it's 26 year old, 25, 26 year old uh, windows. So they're just focusing on the envelope of the building, roof and windows, uh, just upgrading it. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Second. Yeah. Yeah, so well, we're, we're probably, there's a possibility that we might be able to retain some of the employees that currently work there that we want to retain. Um, so that's a possibility. And then also we have some in-house candidates that we're looking at. We're going to have a supervisor overseeing that whole piece that will also be there during the day. Uh, so, um, and then we'll have to put out ads in the, in the local market. And we feel we can be very competitive with, with wage rates, and, but also b uh, benefits. Michael, can you repeat her question? So yeah, I'm sorry. So the, the question was more about staffing the gatehouse. How are we going to staff? Is, is maintenance going to be involved in that? Um, so the response is, is we may we may hold on to some of the current workers if they're interested in working with B. We'll go into the market and place ads and hire some new folks. And then one of our we also have some internal candidates here that are interested in moving down there. How, how do we have the depth, the, the expertise to do background checks and uh, because these people are the, the responsible job is the, we know from the past we have uh, done verbal media and, and so on and yeah. we never got a clear answer what happened there. Yeah. And, well there's two components of our current contract uh, with the company Coastal. One provides gatehouse services, the other provides security services. Or they also provide security services. Right now we're going to keep security services in, in place with this company. We're just changing out the gatehouse. We didn't want to do it all at once. Um, it, was, it was way too overwhelming for us. So, uh, so the security team will still be here. But even at the gatehouse, they call Levels of security. Uh, bottom would be like all metal glove, and what I think we have is they really three inch uh, versus people really responsible for security. What are your hopes uh, for that job? I think so. Again, you're right. To, to, so the question is there's different levels of security uh, and, and different. Plantations probably have different levels in place. You get what you pay for. Yeah, and right now we have mainly what we would consider to be breeders. So um, I don't see us escalating that up to a, uh, another level, but I will share that some of the, the breeders that we have are ex-military, um, and at least some of the ones that we might want to keep on are ex-military. So I, some of the ones I feel pretty comfortable with being down there. I mean, the, the gatehouse experience is one thing, the security is probably another that may warrant some additional um, conversation with the board and, and committees. Because if we want to we want to raise the bar down there, maybe put a gate in uh, or a tag system so when they come in, the arm goes up automatically. Um, you're going to have to widen the lanes. You're probably going to put a, bit, put a bit of money to be able to do it. It can be done. Um, but I think my goal would be is one, uh, have good breeders that also recognize the risk involved with individuals coming into this community and have a system that they can readily contact individuals if needed if something goes wrong. I, I can't tell you how many, how many guests we've had. You know, I've called in the past. 
passes, but that doesn't really fit. Yeah. That's part of the they challenge. stopped to get the pass, yeah. and that didn't work. Yeah. Some guy did it. You want to do that? You can well, sit there and do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, so that's one of the reasons we're taking a look at the changes. This morning I got a head nod. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but my comment too that some of them just kind of look through the window and go like that. I don't know if they ever see that there's a tag on there or not. And then others come out and actually talk with you, you know, not lined up behind you, but they talk with you and you get to know them a little bit. And those are some of them that's more tag as you mentioned. Yeah. Very nice people. Yeah. And it should be, you know, my vision for the gatehouse would be. Uh, should be a great experience, whether you're a member, whether you're a family member, whether you're just visiting the community for an event, it should be a gatehouse experience, an interaction that takes place down there. Not a head nod, not a way through. Uh, they should be out of the building. Uh, if it's cooler, they should have jackets. If it's raining, they should have a raincoat. You know, those kind of things. So, um, and I think Terry, who's gonna help lead that into the back of the room, you know, has the same vision. It's gonna take some work, but I think we can definitely get it to a better spot. Yes, sir. Your presentation was excellent, and we wanna thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Your presentation. Thank you. It was very thorough, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Michael, I would like to thank you for coming in to attend the Lifestyle Committee. I would like to thank you for coming into the meetings and talking with us and getting a feel for what the residents really are looking for and would like to have done. You have a very interesting way of really kind of looking at all of us and getting an idea and a feel for us, and then you have problems, solutions. Thank you very much. You know, the thing is, is that, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so my approach here is no different than I've approached any other community that I've worked with. It's a partnership, it's a relationship that we build, this is your home. You know, as a management team and employees, we want to do the best we can uh, you know, to serve you and provide the best experience for you. Also realizing that we have to have a great experience for employees. But also realizing there's financial considerations, and we have to do we have to um, uh, be sensitive that these are your resources that we're using, and we need to take care of them. So that's my high level vision that I share with my our, our leadership team, our directors, uh, and our employees. So uh, I appreciate the comments and feedback. All right. Well, with that, we'll wrap up. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.